You are wrong, weirdo in the forums. Oh no, my computer turned off. What could have happened? It's probably because it overheated. And this is where the question of the day comes from. At what temperature is your CPU getting too hot? A lot of people in forums have lots of opinions, but opinions are like butts. Everyone has one, allegedly. So we're going to talk today about what CPU temperatures are correct, aren't correct, and why almost everything that you read online is dead wrong. The processor in your computer breaks down at a different temperature depending on what kind of computer and processor it is. This is a brand new Asus laptop. It has a Ryzen 9 7940HS, but what's the breakdown temperature on this thing? Somewhere down here, there'll be someone who has an opinion on the temperature that this CPU should get to. A lot of times you'll end up on Tom's Hardware, where everybody seems to have no clue what they're talking about, but they have a solid authoritative opinion anyway. The truth is, this processor, I don't know the maximum temperature, but I can take a pretty good guess. If I do something to heat it up, and I look at the temperature that it gets to whenever it's running a very heavy CPU intensive task, then that's probably about 10 degrees Celsius below the breakdown temperature. I know this because this processor has turbo core. On Intel, it's called Turbo Boost, where the cores can speed up and slow down if the processor is at a low enough temperature, what they call thermal margin, below where it actually will fail and crash and the whole computer will stop working. Over a decade of processors has Turbo Boost or Turbo Core, which means the whole max temperature thing and what temperature should it be at when it's idle and all that, is not necessarily as accurate as it once was. See, back in the 2000s, a processor typically was single core and it had a maximum temperature and a typical temperature if you had a decent cooling system. It couldn't do turbo core, didn't have the power efficiency stuff that you see on modern chips. So it was pretty typical for, say, the average desktop processor to idle around 40 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, that's not how things work now. Some chips can actually idle extremely low, room temperature. I have seen some very low power chips actually idle so low that I was like, wait a minute, how is this processor 21 degrees Celsius? Is your air conditioner on? No, it just happened to be winter and the heat was turned down. But if the processor doesn't produce much heat, it's very power efficient, low power, but also low speed, then it can idle at a very low temperature. A processor like this is designed to operate a little bit higher because while it is still designed to maintain lower power so that it, the laptop battery doesn't discharge too quickly, um, I'm going to pull up open hardware monitor, which these days I replace with a Libre hardware monitor, but this is what's on here. And it's not really doing anything. I just have a browser open and not really anything else. Um, CPU package, 3.2 watts. And it's idling at 31 degrees Celsius, which is just a little over room temperature. It's probably floating around 26 in here now. So this chip, it runs a little bit warm, but not very much. Whereas other chips, you know, desktop chips, that if you have a high performance chip like a Ryzen 9 desktop chip or an Intel i9, whatever, you're going to see those things idle at higher temperatures unless you have a massive cooling system like a water cooling system. So it's not really correct to say, oh, you know, I, in my experience, processors just shouldn't get to this, that, or the other temperature or shouldn't idle this high or low because for every kind of chip, it's different. Where it becomes a problem is when you go looking to see, is the temperature I'm seeing too hot or is, is the behavior too hot? Um, you start worrying that the, the health of your hardware is bad and you start looking for resources to help. Well, I'm, I'm looking here and it's a 31 Celsius, but it's brand new. But if I started seeing this same computer that idles, you know, in the low 30s, if I started seeing the idle temperature be in the 40s, I might get a little concerned. Of course, if it's doing anything, the temperature is going to go up. Uh, but idle, low 30s makes sense on this computer. If it's idling at 50, I know something's wrong. But the only reason I know this is because I know this CPU strikes a balance somewhere between the low power, low voltage chips and the really high performance gaming chips, the HX series, that can 
run at a TDP of 54 watts. This one maxes out at 35 and runs at 25 on battery. So this is a power saving but still high performance chip. So it, it sits somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't expect a gaming laptop to idle at 30 degrees Celsius. It's just not going to happen. But some idiot in the forum would look at this computer if it was idling at 40 and say, oh, your computer's way too hot. So Furmark, GPU stress test, and do the CPU burner at the same time. 16 threads and a GPU stress test. There we go. Look at that. Furmark on my computer. You can't see it. That's wonderful. Well, it's already up to 64, 65. And when it spiked before the cooling system could catch up, it actually hit 78.6. A lot of older desktop chips broke down at 90. So if you saw temperatures in the high 70s, you were probably freaking out going, something is wrong, it's going to burn up soon, even though technically there was still some overhead there. You can typically get pretty close to the breakdown temperature and things be generally okay, though it can damage the chip if it stays that hot for that long. So this chip takes advantage of the fact that there's thermal margin. So what that means is it's not close enough to break down. So it's going to push the cores to higher frequencies. It basically is vendor overclocking, and that means it's going to get as hot as possible. But some laptop chips can do the turbo thing up to the high 80s and still be perfectly fine. A lot of laptop CPUs have a breakdown of 105 Celsius, hotter than boiling. But some guy in the forum will tell you that your CPU getting up to 80 on your laptop means that your laptop is there's something seriously wrong and you need to take your computer apart and replace the thermal paste. No, 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 no. maybe you need to buy a whole new heat sink because your heat pipes are clogged or something. And that's just not true. It's just not. A lot of people don't understand how this stuff works. So they just pick some numbers. And I'm dead serious. That is the level of BS that you see on the internet and forums today. They'll just pick some numbers and they'll go, oh, it, your CPU hit 80 degrees? Your computer is burning itself alive and you'll be lucky if it works for another week. I don't know, Jack, about Turbo Boost or how it works, but that's just a bad number. I just th I've just always heard that that was a bad number. I'm like 50 years old and that's what I heard in the 90s. <laughs> you know, uh, get up to date with modern technology. Things don't work the way that they used to. It's at 91.8. It hit 91.8 in a laptop chip. This is a brand new computer. So a lot of idiots are going to say, oh, oh my God, it's in the 90s. It's overheating, man. You need to get your computer fixed. It's literally brand new. It's designed to do this. This is correct. You are wrong, weirdo in the forums. So that was the whole point of this video is to say that everyone in forums that says anything about CPU temperature is a moron and doesn't understand the technology. If you really want to know the official number for your CPU, the manufacturers usually have the specifications on their website. It's, it's either going to be called T-Junction or T-Max, something like that. But the temperature specs are on the manufacturer's websites if you really want to know it. But here's the thing. If your processor is overheating and it's a problem, your computer will shut off or crash all the time whenever it's under heavy load for a sustained period. That's it. If there's a problem, it'll crash. You'll know there's a problem because there'll actually be a problem. Don't worry about the temperature of your stupid CPU just because some idiot on Tom's hardware thinks that 80 is a scary number. That's all. Thanks for watching. Have a great one. Keep your CPUs nice and spicy. Take care. Oh, it crashed. I'm just kidding.